Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to be creating, keep creating more scenarios using uh, Cucumber, but this time we're going to be using specification by example, which is the, the way that we're going to be using from now on. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so, hit the bell so you can receive the notification of the next videos and I'll be posting the links for the previous videos so you can keep it up, right? So let's start. Uh, we have here a, our, our code, right? We have our scenario. I'm going to comment this out because uh, as I talk about this in the previous videos, the IntelliJ is not dealing really well with docstring. So we have a, these two scenarios. I'm going to run this so we can see what, what we did already. Um, we have everything passing, only these that are missing, nothing is happening here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this scenario here, right? And it's very important for us to understand why we need to create this scenario. So when we look at this, this is going to be the same as these two scenarios. And why we are using this, right? So we need to ask a couple of questions. Uh, for the business to understand, do we need to actually send all of this data this is if i need to do this i would need to do for every new scenario and that's going to be just just too much right too polluted so it makes sense to use some of these if you you actually care about the data you want to change like you are testing different passwords and you want to to specify those passwords but just doing this is just going to make it more complicated and more hard to read like, do I need to say it's a post or it's a get? When I create, it's a post. When I, when I retrieve, when I read, it's a get already, right? Also the endpoint, I don't need the endpoint, right? So this is much cleaner, right? I could, I could put here uh, uh, something like, and I receive a 200, but I don't want to do that, but it's fine if you want to do it, right? So we're going to create this scenario. And we're going to create in the in the user step in uh, step definitions. And I have a create uh, I have a, a method already here. But now the tricky part is how can I create this data, right? I need all of this data, although it's not in my feature file. I need to create the data, right? The data still need to be created. So in my in the in one of the presentation that I did in, in the beginning in the, in, in the beginning of the series I did this presentation where we're going to have a domain class right so this is in Portuguese sorry about that uh, we're going to create a domain class which is this one domain uh, support domain and we already have this the step definition the features and we're going to create the support domain and the user, this is going to be our class that is going to help us map our business need. So when I go here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new package called, uh, I need to pass everything here, BDD, not here. Uh, it's, it's going to be a parent package, a, a uh, sibling package called support. And on support, I'm going to create a package called domain, right? So in here, I'm going to create a class called user. Right? To create this class, we need to have uh, what the user is going to have, right? And the user is going to have this information, which is the same information that we have been using, and it's the information that you know it's on our API. Right? So I'm going to hold Alt, so I can mark everything here. And I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going to back to my class. I'm going to paste it. Right. And now I'm going to ho hold Alt again so I can mark everything. And I'm going to say public string. The majority of this thing here is going to be string. And I can close it up. Uh, and by the way, this is not public. This is private. The pattern with Java is private. Right. So uh, let me clean this up. And these two are integer, not string. Awesome. So this is what the user needs to have, right? Uh, I can come here and I can generate something here, generate. 
and I'm going to generate the getter and setters, right? So when I do this, IntelliJ is going to generate all the getters and setters because the pattern of Java, the standard is you have private attributes and you have public methods, right? But this is too, too polluted. We're going to be using something called Lombok, right? So Lombok has a plugin. It's, it's a plugin uh, that we can use. Uh, that you can put on our dependencies. So I'm going to come here to our build, build, build and I'm going to put Lombok here. I'm going to refresh it, so it's going to download. I do also need to have Lombok on my IntelliJ, right? Lombok, I need to have this Lombok plugin. Why do I need to have two? So the one that we are doing, this one, is for the code to actually run, right? The code needs to run regardless of the ID that we are using. So this is for the, the actual code, the actual Java code, be able to understand Lombok and the system run. And the IntelliJ one is for IntelliJ to actually understand Lombok. Otherwise, IntelliJ is, is not going to realize we have Lombok and start, it's going to give uh, failures for us. And we do not want, we do, we do not want that, right? So awesome. So what I can do with Lombok? So I showed that we can create a bunch of getter and setters with IntelliJ, right? But with Lombok, I can create all my getters like this. And I have all my getters just with this. I can have all my setters as well. And I can do getters and setters. But Lombok has the data annotation uh, that I can use and has the getters and setters and a couple other things here. Awesome. What that enables me to do now is that I can come here to my code, to my step definition. And I can say uh, I'm going to have a, need to have a user here, so I'm going to say private user user. I need to import this. Great. So now I can say that user is going to receive a user um, builder. Sorry, I missed the builder. So the data, and I also need to have a builder here on my Lombok, right? The builder is going to allow me to create uh, to create the instance of this user modifying its data. So I can say now say builder dot build. Awesome, right? I'm going to put something here just to debug. I'm going to rerun our test, but now I'm going to run it in the debug mode. And we're going to see that the user is empty. There is nothing here, right? Because we did not we did not pass any data, any information here. Now I can say, okay, since we have the data field here, we have the the data, I can I can modify here and I can say uh, email is going to be Rafa at email.com and I need to build. When I rerun it now, you're going to see that I have my email here, but everything else is no. So does, it, does that mean that I'm going to have to send every data here? Yes and no. Right. We do we need to do we need to tell it that which data we want. But we don't. We do not need to say every data here because some of, uh, most of those are default data, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to create default data now. So I can say uh, builder dot default, and I'm going to put it here, 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 and here. And I'm going to give the default data for each and every one of those. So I'm going to say that this is going to be 10. This is going to be Rafa Lima. This is going to be Rafael. This is going to be Lima. This is going to be Rafa l at email gmail.com this is going to be one two three four 
or 5, this is going to be 81999999, and this is going to be 1. Awesome. If I rerun my test, now you're going to see that I have my user. I have everything that we did, but the email is not rafael at gmail, it's rafa at email.com because we, we kept it here, right? So now I have the default data and whatever I need to change, I change. I don't need to send everything. I only specify what I need to change. So and if I rerun here and we open it up, you're going to see now everything now is the default data. Awesome, right? So now we can we can finalize, we can keep it up, right, with our test. So what you're going to do, we're going to do the same as we did here, which is this post here. So this one is exactly this one. We already have the user that we created. And now I'm going to copy and paste this right here. I'm going to clean it up a little. And I need to say which endpoint we, we are using because the endpoint used to come from the scenario, it's not coming from the scenario anymore. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say private uh, static final static final string create user endpoint why static final i want to be a constant i don't want it to be used by anybody i want to be a constant uh, because i don't want that to change this should not be changed uh, uh, on runtime so now i have the create use an endpoint, right? If I rerun my test, that scenario should pass. It should come to 200 here. The other one failed because we did not do anything yet here, right? So now I'm going to create this scenario. And now what I need to do, I need to do a get to retrieve it. And we do the same thing here. We retrieve using this here, right? This, one of these two doesn't matter, it's the same. I'm going to duplicate here and I'm going to say this is the user endpoint. And the endpoint is the value is this one. But I do not need to be Raphael here. And I want this to be a variable. So I'm going to say name. All right. And the get that we do is this one. So we're going to do a get this here. Right. Great. The endpoint now is going to be uh, user endpoint, right? This one I'm going to clean it up because we need to change this. But th there's a catch, right? You're going to see that the user, there is the, the name variable there. I need to tell it what is the name variable. So what is the actual value? So it, it knows which ones, uh, how it's going to populate, right? So I have a given on my research, on my on my researcher that I can say path param because it's a parameter in my path, and I say the name of the variable, which is name. So name here, and I pass the value of that variable. The value is the user, right? The user name that we created, right? So this is going to be user dot, since we have the getters, we have user dot get username. So now it's going to put the name username here in the, in the place of the name. Awesome. And now I need to check. And what I'm checking here, I'm checking the username of the body. And again, I'm going to come here and say get username. I'm going to rerun everything and everything should pass now. I can double check here, right? I can just come here and I say uh, something. It's going to fail. You're going to see that it failed because you're going to see the data that was retrieved and you're going to fail because something, it was expecting uh, something, but it was actually Rafa Lima. So now I'm going to change, I'm going to rerun it, and voila, worked. So now we have a way of creating a data much cleaner, right? So this is a much cleaner scenario, look at that. 
right? A much cleaner scenario for us to work with. Uh, the code is it's still not good. We need to do some changes here. Uh, I'm checking only for the username. I could check for more, and that's and that's what we want to do. Uh, also, we are mixing here the step definition with uh, stuff related to the API. We're going to be tackling those uh, in the in the next videos. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you like it, give the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications, and I'm going to see you on the next videos. Thank you.